With the planning and building of my new city underway, I need to start building a ton of new small town themed type buildings like this one here. This is going to be the wine and cheese bar. And it's funny because even with all the parts I have, I found out really quickly that I don't have nearly what I thought I had because I originally intended on wanting to use one of these awesome purple, pink, or green shades for this building. But because of the parts that were required to make it, I ended up having to settle on the dark red because that was one of the only other colors I had all the parts I wanted to use to build this. I'm using two different buildings for inspiration from downtown Tecumseh, where I live. The first is a kind of high-class bar. It's the wine and cheese building. And the second is the actual second floor of our local town's bakery. I thought it would be fun to come up with a combination of two different buildings to create my own unique style and look. Part of the thing that you may or may not have noticed with looking at both of those buildings, a lot of the buildings that are on my main street will built in the late 1800s and very early 1900s. And with that particular era of building, the upstairs levels are quite large. Most of these buildings are built with 10 to 12 foot ceilings, so they are considerably taller than most of your small town buildings that you would see on a main street. To give you a quick example in Lego, my building would be 1900s. The building on the left, which is a Lego design building, would be around 1940. And here showing my main street again, the buildings on the left were 1910, the buildings on the right were 1940s and 1950s. And as you can tell, they are much shorter buildings. The biggest reason is the main floor would be the only floor they'd make high. Typically it was a 10 foot ceiling on the first floor, and then every floor above that is usually within eight to nine feet. Now, while building this, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make the entire top floor all white, except for the red accent that's on the front of it. And because I have no white masonry brick at all that's opened anyway, I decided let's go head over to my collection of sets that are sealed in the box and let's grab one that I specifically bought just for parts a few years ago. I bought a total of three of these Queer Eye, the Fab Five Loft sets, specifically because I knew they had a lot of both light blue gray and white masonry brick in them. We're gonna throw it on the ground, rip it open, and start scavenging parts. And because I'm already ripping the parts out of it anyway, I thought, you know what, why not use some of the furniture that was actually in this set and use it to decorate the top floor of my building. Typically, I don't do a lot of decorations on the interiors, but I thought since I'm using the parts out of this anyway, why not add it to the build? And I think it turned out really nice. To show you what the interior looks like without the exterior walls on it, you can see I used the kitchen, the living room, and the big screen TV. I also added a small bathroom with a toilet, a shower, and a sink to the back. And then I have two doors. The top, or the left door, I should say, is the door that takes you to the stairwell. And the right door is for the bathroom. On the facade of this, I also added a little bit of stained glass right above the main window because I thought it really gave the building a lot of unique character. With the top floor done, now it's time to put it back together and get busy on the base floor. With the base and the top both, I didn't put a lot of detail in the alleyway, but what I did make sure I did is on the last four studs that are sticking out of the building, because the buildings next to this are going to be a little bit shorter. This one is actually 22 studs in depth, where most of my other Lego buildings are only 16 by 16 studs. So, because I know that little part that's sticking out is going to be visible, I made sure I went ahead and added any of the little greebling that I was doing on the backside to the first four to five studs on the side of the walls as well. So even though there's not a lot of character on the backside, it will still be enough detail to make it interesting when looking down the alleyways. Back here, all I simply did is what I do on most of my builds. I put a electric meter and a gas meter, I put a small entry door. I blocked out the windows because like I've shown in other buildings, I have a stair that is located on the back wall, which you're gonna see here in just a few minutes. And underneath that stairwell, I put a small bathroom because you can't have a bar without public restrooms because people, when they're sitting at the bar drinking, obviously are gonna have to get up and relieve themselves every so often. After getting all the exterior walls fully finished and then tiled on top, I pop them back off and get to work on doing the interior and I'm really happy with how it turned out. All I simply did is I tried to make it appear as though it has a nice hardwood floor. 
Again, you can see that little stairwell that I'm referring to with the restroom that is located underneath that stairwell. I added one booth with a table and some flowers on it. I have the wet bar with some glasses and wine bottles behind that and three small stools located at the wet bar itself. And I think once this is fully completed and I illuminate it because I do illuminate every build that I do, that it's really going to look amazing. But I have to tell you, I did not illuminate it for this video. And it's because I have a whole bunch of products that are on their way to me. And I don't want to say much more than that, but I will tell you that I have some big news coming very, very soon. So for now, this is where I'm going to stop with this building. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy the build and we'll see you next time on Bevan's Bricks.